In this video, we will try to understand how to find out the mean effective pressure and air standard efficiency in case of a diesel cycle. We have prepared an Excel calculator also for the calculation of the efficiency and mean effective pressure in case of a diesel cycle. Now first we will have a look at this particular calculator. So user will have to input this particular data. So the specific example is taken over here. So that will also explain later on. So pressure P1 is given as in bar as one bar suppose temperature T1 at the start of compression is 30 degree centigrade then pressure P2 is equal to pressure P3 that is given as 30 bar at which the heat is supplied gamma that is the ratio of specific heat is given as 1.4 now cutoff takes place as 6% of the stroke that is the point at which the heat supplied is stopped that is known as the cutoff point then specific heat at constant pressure for air is given as 1.005 kilojoule per kg kelvin and specific heat of air at constant volume is 0.718 kilojoule per kg kelvin so this is just the data which will be given to us in the example and once the user input this particular data in the excel calculator he can directly get the values ready-made values over here that is the compression ratio then temperature t2 t3 t4 then cutoff ratio then percentage clearance, heat supplied, heat rejected, mean effective pressure, then efficiency of the diesel cycle, work done and stroke volume expressed in terms of meter cube per kg. So this is very very useful calculator and if you want this particular calculator you can just email me at the given particular email address that is rajangosavi at the rate gmail.com. Now we have to start with the analysis of this particular diesel cycle. Now we have already seen the video on this particular derivation of the air standard efficiency of diesel cycle and the description the link of the given particular will be given in the description so let us start with the analysis part over here so one to two it is the isentropic compression process then two to three it is the heat supplied at constant pressure then three to four it is the isentropic expansion process and 4 to 1 it is the heat rejected at constant volume now at point 2 it is the volume is v2 or it is also known as the clearance volume from 1 to 2 this is the stroke of the piston so this is known as the stroke volume now as you can see from this particular pv diagram volume v1 correct? so this is the volume v1 that will be equal to vs plus vc where vc is nothing but equal to v2 now heat is supplied at constant pressure and 2 to 3 it is the constant pressure line and point 3 is known as the cutoff point now the same cycle can be expressed on the TS diagram so let us see the various processes once again on the TS diagram so as you can see over here 1 to 2 it is the isentropic compression process during which the entropy remains constant so therefore s1 is equal to s2 during 3 to 4 it is the isentropic expansion process and therefore s3 is equal to s4 2 to 3 it is the heat supplied at constant pressure process so this is the constant pressure line and 4 to 1 it is the heat rejected at constant volume so this is the constant volume line now please remember that we have already seen the video on this correct and therefore we'll directly start with the analysis part of this now as you can see over here r is known as the compression ratio that is nothing but the volume before compression to the volume after compression now volume before compression is v1 and volume after compression is v2 so it is the ratio of v1 upon v2 but we know that v1 is nothing but vs plus vc that we have already seen and v2 is nothing but the clearance volume that is vc the second ratio which is important is the cutoff ratio so rho is known as the cutoff ratio 0.3 is the cutoff point so it is the ratio of volume after cutoff that is v3 divided by volume before cutoff that is v2 so it is v3 upon v2 so ratio of volume v3 divided by volume v2 then expansion ratio so consider 3 to 4 expansion process so re is equal to volume it is the ratio of volume after expansion that is v4 divided by volume before expansion that is v3 now here we'll have to make some adjustments so v4 upon v3 is nothing but v1 upon v3 because v1 and v4 they are same because it is a constant volume process so in place of v4 we have substituted v1 so it is v1 upon v3 now this v1 upon v3 can be written as v1 upon v2 into v2 upon v3 so multiplied by v2 and divided by v2 so that v2 v2 will get cancelled out 
and again we'll get v1 upon v3 which is nothing in turn equals to v4 upon v3 now v1 upon v2 is nothing but the compression ratio so that is r and v2 upon v3 is 1 upon rho because v3 upon v2 is rho that is cutoff ratio so we can say that expansion ratio is equal to r upon rho now efficiency of the diesel cycle we have already derived in our earlier video so you can just refer to that particular video so it is 1 minus rho raised to gamma minus 1 divided by gamma r raised to gamma minus 1 into rho minus 1 now here we have to derive the expression for mean effective pressure now we know that work done is equal to pressure into volume so pressure will be equal to work done divided by stroke volume now work done is nothing but area under the pv diagram so in this particular case it will be area under 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 and 4 to 1 now this particular area can be divided into various parts so for example this can be written as area under pv diagram that is 1 2 3 4 this area can be written in this particular form so we will take into consideration this rectangle first a 2 3 and b so it is the area of rectangle that is width into depth so it is p2 into this particular width is v3 minus v2 multiplied by this depth is nothing but p2 so this is the area of the rectangle then second area is b2 4 and c that is nothing but the area under the isentropic expansion curve from 3 to 4 now area under isentropic expansion curve is given by p3v3 minus p4v4 divided by gamma minus 1 so higher value minus the lower value that we will have to take in the denominator now we have taken two areas so a 2 3 b then b 3 4 and c from this we have to subtract the area of c 1 2 and a so that is nothing but the area under this compression isentropic compression curve so we have to subtract that particular area so it is minus again higher value minus lower value so it is p2 v2 minus p1 v1 divided by gamma minus 1 this is the expression for the work done ready-made expression for the work done in case of the isentropic process so two areas we have added and from that we have subtracted one area to get the area under the curve that is 1 2 3 and 4 so once again 3 once again see over here this is the area of this rectangle that is this particular area plus area under the expansion curve that is this particular area minus the area under this compression curve that is 1 to 2 so this area we have subtracted so that we will get this remaining area that is nothing but our required area under PV diagram so using this we can find out the mean effective pressure so all these formulas they are incorporated in your excel calculator and will give you directly the values now let us start with the problem statement suppose we are having a diesel engine which takes in air at the pressure of 1 bar and temperature of 30 degree centigrade the pressure at the end of compression is 30 bar and cutoff is 6 percent of the stroke and we have to calculate various values like compression ratio percentage clearance heat supplied heat rejected and mean effective pressure so all these values which are which will take much time correct while calculation during the calculations correct we can easily find out by using our excel calculator so let us write down the data first which is already we have seen in our excel calculator as well as in the problem statement also now we'll consider one to two isentropic compression process so we know that during the isentropic compression process the law that is followed is pv raised to gamma is equal to constant so apply this to the one to two state point so it is p1 v1 raised to gamma that is equal to p2 v2 raised to gamma just rearrange the term so it is v1 upon v2 raised to gamma will be equal to p2 upon p1 now just cross multiply by this p1 term so it is p1 into v1 upon v2 raised to gamma but we know that v1 upon v2 is nothing but compression ratio so we can say that p2 is equal to p1 into r raised to gamma so p2 upon p1 will be equal to r raised to gamma now we have to find out the value of r that is the compression ratio so just transfer this gamma on the other side it will become 1 upon gamma so r will be equal to p2 upon p1 raised to 1 upon gamma now substitute the values of p2 and p1 and gamma also so it is 30 upon 1 raised to 1 upon 1.4 so that will get the value of r as 11.352 so compression ratio is 11.352 now we have to find out the cutoff ratio and percentage clearance now it is given that the cutoff takes place at 6% of the stroke so we have to 
write down the expression of v3 so because volume at cutoff is nothing but v3 so from the figure it will be v2 or clearance volume plus six percent of the stroke volume so that we have already written over here so that is nothing but v2 plus six percent of vs now vs already we have seen that vs is nothing but v1 minus v2 because v1 is equal to vs plus vc so vs will be equal to v1 minus vc but vc is nothing but v2 so vs can be expressed as v1 minus v2 now divide throughout by v2 so that it will be v3 upon v2 v2 will get cancelled out so it is 1 v1 upon v2 and again v2 will get cancelled out so it is 1 now v1 upon v2 is nothing but the compression ratio so substitute the value of compression ratio that just now we have calculated as 11.352 so it is 1 plus 6 divided by 100 into bracket 11.352 minus 1 and that value comes out to be rho is equal to 1.621 so this is the value of cutoff ratio so up till now we have calculated two values one is compression ratio and another one is cutoff ratio now percentage clearance it is given by vc upon vs that is clearance volume divided by stroke volume into 100 how much is the percentage of the clearance when compared with the stroke volume that is known as the percentage clearance now vc is nothing but v2 and vs is nothing but v1 minus v2 that we have already seen now just rearrange the term so this v2 which is present in the numerator can be written in the denominator as v1 minus v2 divided by v2 so that denominator of the denominator will go in the numerator and will get the same answer as above now this v1 upon v2 minus v2 upon v1 so v1 upon v2 minus v2 upon v1 that v2 upon v2 that is 1 now v1 upon v2 is nothing but compression ratio that is r and value of r that we have already calculated as 11.352 minus 1 so you will get percentage clearance as 9.659 percentage now we have to take into consideration the heat supplied process so consider 2 to 3 heat supplied at constant pressure so as pressure is constant this p2 and p3 by applying the gas law that is pv upon t is equal to constant to this particular 2 to 3 2 and 3 points we will get p2 v2 upon t2 is equal to p3 v3 upon t3 so p2 and p3 they are constant they will get cancelled out so we will get v2 upon t2 will be equal to v3 upon t3 just rearrange the terms so transfer this t3 over here and v2 on this particular side and we know that v3 upon v2 is nothing but cutoff ratio that is rho so rho is equal to t3 upon t2 or we can say that t3 will be equal to t2 into rho now we know that t2 upon t1 is equal to r raised to gamma minus 1 so you can substitute this value over here so in place of t2 you can have t1 r raised to gamma minus 1 so that is 303 r is 11.352 raised to 1.4 minus 1 into rho that we have just now calculated so value of t3 that we will get will be 1297.939 kelvin so we can easily find out the value of heat supplied at constant pressure so it is cp into t3 minus t2 substitute the values value of cp is 1.005 t3 just now we have calculated and t2 already we have calculated as t1 into r raised to gamma minus 1 so both these values we have substituted over here and we will get the value of heat supplied as 499.723 kilojoule per kg now we will find out the value of heat rejection for that we will require the various values so consider 3 to 4 isentropic expansion process now during the isentropic expansion process the relation between temperature and volume that we have already derived in our thermodynamics is higher temperature divided by lower temperature is equal to higher volume divided by lower volume raised to gamma minus 1 so v4 upon v3 is nothing but the expansion ratio and we have already seen that expansion ratio is nothing but compression ratio divided by cutoff ratio so t3 upon this particular term will give the value of t4 so substitute the values so t3 is 1297.939 and r upon rho r is 11.352 rho that is cutoff ratio is 1.621 raised to 1.4 minus 1 so that value of t4 comes out to be 595.852 so heat rejected will be equal to cv now here it, it should be t4 not t2 so cv into t4 minus t1 so value of t4 just now we have calculated as 
595.852 and T1 already we know that it is 303. So heat rejected is 210.267 kilojoule per kg. Now using this value, we can easily find out the various values like work done and other parameters. Now mean effective pressure, let us see how to calculate this particular value. So we can express the various volumes in terms of V2. So V1 upon V2 is R. So we can say that V1 is equal to 11.352 into V2. Then V4 is equal to V1 and therefore whatever is the value of V1, so the same will be the value of V4. Then rho is equal to V3 upon V2, correct? So we can say that V3 will be equal to 1.621 into V2 or rho into V2. So all these values we can easily use for the calculation of the mean effective pressure. Now consider 3 to 4 isentropic expansion process because we will require the values of pressure also for the calculation of the mean effective pressure. So P3 V3 raised to gamma is equal to P4 V4 raised to gamma or P3 will be equal to V4 divided by V3 that is nothing but expansion ratio raised to gamma and expansion ratio is given by R upon rho that is compression ratio divided by cutoff ratio raised to gamma. So from this we can easily find out the value of P4 that is P3 upon this particular ratio. And that value comes out to be 1.9666 bar. So using these values, we can easily find out the value of mean effective pressure. Now the formula we have already derived for mean effective pressure that is P2 into V3 minus V2 plus P3 V3 minus P4 V4 divided by gamma minus 1 minus P2 V2 minus P1 V1 divided by gamma minus 1. So substitute the values of V3, then value of P4, then V4, then P1 and V1, V1 in terms of V2. So all these values we have substituted over here and then we have taken V2 common from the numerator as well as from the denominator and then we have made the calculation. So this value comes out to be 3.65 bar or 3.65 into 100 kilopascal. We have converted bar into kilopascal and that value is 365 kilopascal. So in this way we can use the excel calculator and we have already seen the analysis of the diesel cycle the way in which we can calculate the various values like compression ratio, percentage clearance, then cutoff ratio, heat supplied, heat rejected, efficiency and mean effective pressure. Thank you very much for watching. So if you want the excel calculator you can just email me at the given particular email address. Thank you very much.